to who I'm talking to No more automation I'm hoping you can walk me through And solve my situation It's after midnight And I've been on hold so long Silence, now I'm not alone You're asking me to help you see Words begin to flow This was not my plan, my intention I was I to know For such a long time I feel I've known So send somebody, cause I'm stranded and there's no place left where I can run. Send somebody, cause I'm hanging by a thread, now the whole damn thing's undone. So send somebody, cause I'm stranded and there's no place left where I can run.
and the world that he lived in. No keeping up with the Jones, no hearts or telephones, just a life worth living. Gotta get back to the sea, get back to feeling free. Feel the sun in my heart Maybe it's only a dream Some dreams are meant to be In this place that we call Palm tree reality Lucky you folks that are just happen to be tuning in a little bit earlier than uh, as expected. There's a little taste of what Kevin's going to do for you tonight. I just uh, broadcasted that a little bit live for just a couple of minutes, like a minute or so. So we're, uh, we're about 20 minutes away from the show, uh, actually 15 minutes away from the show. Thanks for joining us. And uh, there he is, Mr. Kevin Hurley. He'll be here doing his, uh, his thang for you shortly. And uh, thanks for uh, tuning in early, if you are, and welcome. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so we're good to go, you guys. Be with you shortly. Hello to who I'm talking to No more automation 
I'm hoping you can walk me through and solve my situation. It's after Mine. <laughs> so uh, we were a couple of minutes before uh, the show, but uh, Kevin wants to show me the song here and say, "Are we live?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> I go, "All right, well, we can do this anyway. We're, we're grown-ups. <laughs> There's no rules on our show." For all the folks that are watching early, you get a little sneak preview here. So, but tell me about this. Well, you have to tell me about it later, so don't worry about it now. Just, just play it. Well, this song is. Play this one for tonight for sure. Maybe I can do a harmony with you on that one too. If I go, I'll just kind of stand over here. That'll be a good one, yeah, for sure. All right, so lucky you f folks out there that got here, tuned in early. Here. Seven minutes away from the show. I'm hoping you can walk me through and solve my situation. It's after midnight.
and this this girl that I have to worry about when Jenna Holland with the FBA, they're looking to see if it will be helpful in preventing this fight from ever happening among Hispanics. Do you know how much this costs and not a few of them? They're paying me. <laughs> yeah, because you're not obese, so you can't. Well, there's probably like, I mean, I think that yeah, they have to be a certain amount of money. Over, yeah, it's over 30. It's over 30. It's over 30. Yeah. I don't know. When we got here, I had had, I don't even think I had had breakfast. And about 3 o'clock, we went to Sonny's, and I had a baked potato and a brisket sandwich. I took the brisket off the sandwich, put it in the baked potato, ate half of it. And you were good? And I was good the rest of the morning. And till the next She's like, You're going to sit right here. Can we get a picture? You know, while we were just talking about that, my cabin people are literally in my, my brother Jeff's people, the people in Texas that are still here in Houston, are in their teens. And it's great to know that us are getting a chance to see them again because I would love to see them again. Look at this. This, my God, this, dog. this kills me. Look at this. Oh, he loves this environment. Huh? He thinks my brain. Look yeah. out. Sitting two minutes away here. And I mean, he can even see things. Uh-uh. One minute away. Actually, right. if you want to get ready with the uh, slate. <laughs> When's the last time you guys ate? Because we're going to have dinner here. Well, we'll have some pizza. I don't know if you guys are into it. We're just talking about oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about Jenny. <laughs> 
We're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna, I might eat. Have a pizza pizza. we're gonna well, eat. Well, you know what? We're gonna have pizza and salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're gonna eat tonight. <laughs> and we can all talk for nine minutes. Because I'm starving. I'm eating. You guys can. I you hope can you. I hope you ate something today, Billy D. You guys can eat cabbage if you want, but I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm eating. Cabbage. <laughs> what the hell? Well, I was going to have a um, chocolate <laughs> covering for my pie. You can eat bark. <laughs> you can eat bark if you want. We have a scrolling going on. All right, so it's 6.30, exactly on the dot. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Billy and Cindy D's garden party. Uh, scrolling happening. Scrolling is happening, right? Yes. I'm oh, i got to take the, uh, the yeah. now now appearing. Go. Uh, i got something else I have I to know. take care of here, too. So, uh, you yeah, know, so we're a little bit uh, haphazard here, but that's pretty normal. Now it's like a thing. It's like a thing. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Billy and Cindy D's Garden Party. This is our 24th guest for this season, and tonight's guest is Kevin Hurley. Take 24. <laughs> All right, so uh, today, it, today it rained like cats and dogs. We had thunder and lightning, and I was like, a little bit worried, uh, but it's turned out to be a pretty nice evening here. We're going to have a nice, nice, nice little show here. Hopefully some people will be showing up here shortly for our live audience. And uh, what do I have in mind here? I forgot what I, I already made a list here a couple days ago, and I forgot. Forgot even what I'm going to be doing tonight. Here, let's take a look here. Oh yeah, some of the some of these songs that I haven't done in a long time. And one of them is a song by Lyle Lovett. I thought maybe I'd do that one first. And uh, this song goes out to all the boat owners out there. <laughs> for the, the first thing I ever did when I came to the Keys is I bought a really cool boat. The second best thing I ever did when I had the boat was selling it. <laughs> and the third thing was when I went somewhere and rented my boat <laughs> that I sold to somebody. I rented it for the day. It's like, yeah, this is way better than owning it. Way better. Because <laughs> there is an acronym for boat, for all you folks that don't know. It's B-O-A-T, break out another thousand. But nowadays it's more like break out another 10,000 because <laughs> owning a boat is not a, f it's, it's a challenge. It's, that's right. It's, it's, come on, bring that up there, Kevin. Tell them, tell them, tell them what you just said. I don't know if they heard you that there. Uh, what is a boat there, Kevin? Boat is a hole in the water that you pour money into. <laughs> That's the truth, Tro. That is the truth. So whenever I do the song, I always think about those four people that own boats that are they're just like pulling their hair out, just like I was. And the only thing I can say to them is sell your boat and rent. Whenever you want to go out, rent one. It's much cheaper. You can get a bunch of people together. Don't have to worry about cleaning it. Don't have to worry about maintenance. Don't have to worry about nothing. <laughs> Here we go. If I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. And if I had a pony, I'd ride him on my boat. And we could all together. Go out on the ocean, be upon my pony on my boat. And if I were Roy Rogers, I sure would be single. I couldn't bring myself to marrying old Dale. It'd just be me and Trigger, 
Riding through the movies We buy a boat And off to sea we'd sail And if I had a boat Go out on the ocean And if I had a pony I'd ride them on my boat and we could all together Go out on the ocean Me upon my pony On my boat The mystery masked man was smart And he got himself a Tonto Cause Tonto did the dirty work for free Oh, but Tonto, he was smarter. And one day he said, Kimasabi, kiss my ass, I bought a boat, and I'm going out to sea. And if I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. And if I had a pony, I'd ride him on my boat. And we could all together go out on the ocean, me upon my pony. And if I was like lightning, I wouldn't need no sneakers. I come and go as much as I please. And I'd scare them by a sheet of tree, scare them by the light pole, but I would not scare my pony on my boat out on the sea. And if I had a boat, go out on the ocean. If I had a pony, I'd ride him on my boat. And we could all together, we could go out on the ocean, be upon my pony on my boat. Be upon my pony on my boat. Be upon my pony on my rented boat. We're talking impellers and uh, sp spinning props and oh my god! I think of all the things that I went through with a that damn boat. We had a great boat though. We had a, a pontoon. It was 27 foot. It was uh, Coast Guard regulated for 19 people. And man, we had a lot of good times on that thing. We did. I miss it, but uh, not that much. <laughs> All right, so uh, that was the first one. I haven't done that one in a long time. Uh, this next one, uh, actually, you know, I probably should have saved this for you, for you, for, for you Kevin, because it's a Crosby, Stills, and Nash tune. Fair game, do you know that one? Sort of. Never know what you'll decide your fair game. Well, if you, you're a harmony, come on up for this one. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, made a, uh, I made a promise that I wouldn't repeat uh, any songs during the season. I tried to find uh, every, every, every time I do the show for the first half hour try to find songs that I haven't played because I have a boatload of these songs there's a, tons of them yeah boatload <laughs> and uh, you know I, I actually I was thinking about this song with, with Kevin because uh, there's a connection with Kevin uh, with Crosby Stills and Nash and Young we're going to talk about that a little bit later. I haven't had a chance to uh, actually know these some of these guys. Whether they admit it or not, I don't know. <laughs> this is a song that uh, Case and Davidson did for years and years, too. We put this on one of our records. Uh, it was Barely Alive, Volume 1, I think. Hold on a second here. Here's my champagne. Oh, there it is. Yeah. 
This is so weird because, uh, I, you know, because I am a hopeless alcoholic, but uh, every, every gig that I do is a different drink that I have. So when I do the garden parties, I drink champagne. Last night, yeah, uh, Jameson's. <laughs> when I play at uh, Pilot House, Chardonnay. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Every, everywhere I play, there's a different, uh, different drink that I have when I, when I play there. I don't know what that is about. It's called alcoholism. <laughs> I'm under control. All right, so this is called Fair Game. This is uh, off of uh, one of the uh, uh, first or second albums they did. Uh, always loved this song. Steven Stills, what an amazing uh, songwriter. Guitar player, too, man. Take a look around you, tell me what you see. The girl who thinks she's ordinary looking, she has got the key. If you can get close enough to look into her eyes, there's something there that's right behind the bitterness she hides. Your fair game. You never know what she'll decide. Your fair game. Just relax, enjoy the ride. Find a way to reach her, make yourself a fool. Do it with a little class, disregard the rules. This one knows the bottom line. Couldn't get a date The ugly duckling Striking back and she'll Decide her fate Your fair game You never know What she'll decide Your fair game Just relax Enjoy the ride you never notice are the ones you have to watch because she's clever and she's devilish while she's looking at your crotch try your hand at conversation gossip is a lie pretty soon she's gonna take you home she's gonna make you wanna die in your fair game you never know what she'll decide your fair game just relax, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Thank you very much. While well, she's looking at your crotch, that's what I said. <laughs> how he wrote it.
So I got this new song I wrote, and uh, Kevin walked away. So um, maybe I'll find something else to play here. <laughs> Don't want to get some mice? I can play this song while I'm waiting for Kevin to get back. My baby, she sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine. My baby, she sparkle and shine, and everyone knows she's fine. She blesses all she sees, the toss of her hair, kiss on the breeze. She don't love no one but me, and I can't believe she's mine. Shimmering, she moves. Sunlight all around her, and even when she's blue, silver clouds around her, my baby, sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine, whoa, my baby, she's sparkling and shine, and everyone knows she's mine. My babe, she swings down the street, sleeps. <laughs> My baby swings down the street with big, tall, high heels, shoes on her feet. She walks by and my heart skips a beat, and I'm stumbling like a fool. And she gives me something so sweet, I can't lie, no, I can't cheat. Sparks fly whenever we meet. And I'm breathless because she's so cool. Anywhere she goes, sunlight all around her, even when she's blue, silver clouds around her. My babe, sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine. My baby, she's a sparkle and shine, and everyone knows she's mine. Anywhere she goes, sunlight all around her, even when she's blue, silver clouds surround her. My babe, sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine, sparkle and shine. My babe, she's sparkle and shine, and I can't believe she's mine. Everyone knows she's kind And I can't believe she's mine My babe, sparkle and shine
Kevin, where are you? <laughs> I'm stalling you at the K, Circle K to get, get, some, get a six-pack. <laughs> <laughs> Get some yoo-hoos and rubbers. <laughs> oh, that's, that, that is a story, yeah. True, true story, actually. Three o'clock in the morning at the at, at the uh, trading post, and my, one of our guys that we work with, I'm standing in line behind him, and he's got two yoo-hoos and a box of rubbers. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, it's like, dude, <laughs> you're the man. <laughs> All right, there you are. I got a new song here I want to play for you. <laughs> JD, right? Oh, my God. When you, when you went to the dictionary and went redneck, <laughs> his picture showed up. <laughs> we loved him, but, yeah, he was definitely, uh, he was something else for sure. All right, so this uh, this song, I, this is the only song that I ha actually have been repeating through the uh, through the series of the shows, because it's one of my new ones. And uh, so I just wrote this a couple months ago. This is one of those songs that I actually uh, woke up in the middle of the night and I had I had a melody and I had a I had a title, and, and I woke up with this: "You and Me in Paradise." So I woke up at three o'clock in the morning or whatever it was, and said, "Wow, that's." So I grabbed my phone, you and me in paradise. And I woke up, you know, went back to bed. And I keep telling the story to everybody, but it's absolutely true. If you will wake up in the middle of the night and you have these, have a great idea, <laughs> get your ass up and write it down because it's probably pretty good. It has, at least in my, in my uh, few times it's happened to me. Uh, yeah, write it down because uh, there might be something really good there. So anyways, this Woke up the next day, working on the song. I remember Cindy was in the kitchen. I said, oh, I guess I'm going to have to write the song about her again. <laughs> Which is, Cindy's been my muse for uh, 50 years or whatever. And uh, so you and me in paradise, Cindy. Then I thought about our wedding rings. So our wedding rings, she's a smart lady, that Cindy D. She, uh, she had her wedding rings engraved, and on, uh, she took a, a, a line, a couple lines from a Robert Browning poem in the and the lines go, uh, grow old along with me on one ring and on the other ring, for the best is yet to be. I said, oh, I'm going to steal that for sure. So there's a Cindy D, you and me in paradise, grow old along with me, for the best is yet to be. Okay. And then a couple days later, it was finished. So I hope you like this one. You and me in paradise. together a long time and still you're always on my mind and we've been down this road before I know there's so much so much more it's just you and me you and me and paradise All the people that we've met And all those good times with no regrets There's one thing I know for sure That our love was always pure One day we'll look back, back in time and know I was yours and you were mine and we were blessed from the start one love and one heart it's just you and me you and me
somehow I guess I always knew That I would always be with you You and me in paradise Our rings say grow old along with me For the best is yet to be Now we've reached, reached that time Lesser days ahead than behind, but it'll always be you and me in paradise. Yeah, it'll always be you and me in paradise. In paradise. Paradise. All right, thank you very much. Natalie, you made it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, I got to make a few announcements, and uh, while we're doing that, we'll get Kevin up here and get him uh, settled in here. Once again, thank you so much, folks, uh, for all the folks that are uh, on uh, YouTube or on uh, Facebook watching us right now. Thanks for being here with us, and uh, for all our, we have a nice little crowd out here in the audience tonight, too. Thanks, you guys, for being here as well, as well. Yeah, start getting your stuff together up there. Yeah, and I'm going to do these little announcements here. So, uh, wow, I can't believe uh, it's been a, such a great season here. Uh, we've, uh, we started in, uh, uh, on Thanksgiving, and we've been through 24 weeks or maybe more of, uh, of artists here at the house doing the garden party. And uh, we're winding right down now. We're, uh, we're right down to our, our last uh, two artists, and uh, next week, or no, I'm sorry, tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow, Tuesday. So if you guys want to come by back tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, we have Derek Centron. And uh, Derek is a, he's one of the uh, members of a band called Brothers of Others. And he's just amazing, fantastic. He's a multi-instrumentalist, drummer, guitar player, singer, bass player. He can do it all. Singer, just amazing, amazing, uh, amazing talent. He'll be here tomorrow. And then our last show of the season will be with Erickson Holt, which will be next Monday. Erickson is, once again, he's, he's uh, one of the best, hands down, top five boogie-woogie, New Orleans-style piano player in the world. He's one of the best, world-class. He's got a new album that's been, been out for a year now. He's fantastic. You've got to see. If you, could, if you haven't seen any of our shows, you need to come, come by and watch Erickson next week because he's just amazing, amazing. So Erickson Holt will be our last one. And then I have this whole list. Of, these are all the people that have donated through the, uh, through the season, and I can go down the list. It takes forever, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say thank you to all these people, and thank you to all you people that are out there. We have a tip jar for all the, for all the people that are here in the audience. We also have ways that you can tip. Uh, you can see, if you look at below at the bottom of the screen, you can see all the PayPal and the Venmo, and send all that money down there, and, 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 and uh, yeah. So uh, just keep sending money. And uh, it helps pay for I paid these guys this year. It's, I'm so proud. We're, we're so proud that we were able to pay these guys. All year long, we were able to pay these guys. Not a lot, 150 bucks, but hey, it's better than zero. Last year, we, they all came here and did it for free. So this is a pretty amazing thing. We were, we were able to, uh, to uh, come up with the funds to do, do that, and I can't thank you more. So shut up, Bill, and introduce the artist. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Billy and Cindy D's Garden Party Series, our very, very special guest, one of my dear friends, Mr. Kevin Hurley, right here. Thanks, Billy. Hello. Good evening. Thanks, Billy. 
I'm going to start tonight with a, a song that my wife and I wrote. Actually, she came to me with whole, the whole song written, all the lyrics written. And, uh, it was one of those things. yeah, and so, of course, I wrote the music to it, and she, it's, she hated it, hated it. It was, I, I made it into a ballad, you know, and she goes, no, 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 this is an upbeat song, and I, but, she, I get, but you don't know who, I'm, you know, I'm Kevin Hurley, you can't tell me how to, I'm a musician, I know what kind of music this, these lyrics should have, so it's, well, my life was not easy for a couple of days after that. And I finally, finally said, okay. And this is a song about uh, sailing out on Biscayne Bay. Set the course to 180, spin the sails and hold on tight. We're sailing to nowhere and nowhere's inside. The lights of Miami, they fade to black. The night wind whispers and there ain't no turning back. So loose in the bow line, see the world on the dark. We're sailing to nowhere on a ship without it belong. No heartaches, no headaches, no useless talk. No, 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 no. Cause we're sailing to nowhere on a ship without a cologne. Crackers and cheese, yeah, and plenty of booze. me or just S-O-L. So loosen the bow lines, see the world on the dark. Yeah, we're sailing to nowhere on a ship without it. No heartaches, no headaches, no useless talk. No place to be. Take a tote, play some cards, set your mind free. Trouble can't find you if you're just not there. Worries ain't worries if you don't really care. So loosen the bow lines, leave the world on the dock. To stay landing nowhere on a ship without a clock. Useless talk. No, 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 no. Cause we're sailing to nowhere on a ship without a clock. Yeah, we're sailing to nowhere on a ship without a clock. Yeah, we're sailing to nowhere on a ship without a clock. Yeah, we're sailing to nowhere. Sailing. Thank you. Sailing to nowhere. You know, Billy makes it, he's hard to follow. I mean, he wrote some beautiful songs. Great guitar player and singer. I'm going to play a Beatles song that I, that I just love playing. I've been playing it for a while. I kind of have my own little take on it. Hey, 
blackbird sing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly yeah. mm, on your life. We're only waiting for this moment to arrive. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see yeah. Oh, on your life yeah, You were only waiting for this moment to be free Mmm, blackbird fly Yeah, blackbird fly Take these broken wings and learn to fly. Hey, all your life, you were only waiting for this moment to arrive. Yeah, you were only waiting for this moment to arise. You were only waiting for this moment. much Paul wrote that one Here's another song that uh, my wife and I wrote. Again, about sailing out on Biscayne Bay. But very, very slow sail on Biscayne Bay. It's called Slow Dancing. Songs playing in the cabin below. Champagne on ice, full moon of gold. Dance with me to the morn of life. Let me sing to your soul in the moon and I sing. Sha na 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 Sha na 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 hearts, two minds, two spirits set free. Your body moves to the rhythm of the sea. Yeah. Passions rise like the incoming tide. We never felt love like the love we feel tonight. Say this moment in a bottle 
Let it drift until tomorrow. Keep this message in your heart. Soft on your lips, some wind in your hair. Drinking the magic of the midnight air, yeah. Waltzing on stars, they flicker in your eyes. We're slow dancing right into heaven tonight, saying, Shine on, 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 on. yeah. Shine on. Billy for what, 30 years now? I used to come and see Billy and Paul. We were down here in the Keys when they were playing down there at the Lorelei. <laughs> yeah, there's like, get out of here, kid, you bother me. All right. No, they were very nice. They rocked the place. They just, you guys just, like you do now, you've been continuing to do for all these years. It's been great. Let's see. I'm not really prepared. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. All right, so for me, my real uh, music education and, and everything started when I moved to Coconut Grove, Florida. I've been in garage bands and this and that, but. Then I discovered Coconut Grove with a, uh, a friend of mine named jo Jonas Goldstein from ba uh, Baltimore, who was a fiddle player. He was showing me bluegrass. And so we moved, we went down, we were living in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and we went down, and he goes, I've heard of this place called Coconut Grove. It's supposed to be like the Haight-Ashbury of Miami. I said, all right, let's go. We got in the truck. And uh, I met so many great musicians and songwriters and stuff there. It was, it was just wonderful. And uh, one of the guys I met was a guy, uh, one of the, turned out to be my, one of my best friends in, in my whole life. His name was Bobby Ingram. And he, uh, great, just a great guy, uh, wonderful singer. Just, when I saw, before I met him, uh, I was just a guitar player who screamed. You know, it was like in garage bands, we'd play it, and it, was, it wasn't singing, it was screaming. And I saw him play, he was the first guy I met in Coconut Grove, and I went, I want to do that, you know? I'm sure you've met guys like that. You went, and I, I had never heard a live, a guy singing live like that. I went, you know, so it took me a long time to even get sort of close to the way he sang, but, you know, he was a big inspiration to me. Anyways, back in the day, back in the big folk scare, <laughs> he was in a folk band with uh, David Crosby and David Crosby's brother, and, t and two other guys. And they were called the Les Baxter Balladeers. And, uh, and uh, they traveled all over. You know, they were, they were a pretty hot item. You know, at the time, Bob Dylan was coming up and, and uh, John Denver, John Dusendorf was his name at the time, and a friend of mine named Jim Mason. They all went to all the different folks. Joni Mitchell, and uh, she also came to Coconut Grove. For a little while. So they all seemed to come down there because there was folk clubs and everything. So uh, to continue on with this long story. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Bobby knew Crosby very well. They were lifelong best friends. 
Bobby was never jealous of Crosby. He was always just so happy for his success. And so one night, I played, I used to play with Bobby at a place called Monty Trainers in Coconut Grove. And, uh, and uh, one night we're playing there, and we look over to the back of the wall, where the, uh, the back of the stage, and this guy's like, kind of tall, he's got long hair, and I'm looking, I'm like, geez, that guy looks familiar. Turn around, and he goes, we stop the song, and then this guy goes, hey, Bobby, Crosby told me to call you, because, you know, because I want to buy a boat, and he said, you can help me buy a boat, because Ingram, at one point, was a, um, he was a, uh, in the Navy, so anyways, that began our friendship with Neil Young. He went and bought, first, he bought two boats. The first boat he bought was a 50-foot Trumphy, which is an old motor yacht, just all wood. It's like the Honey Fitz that John Kennedy had, that beautiful old boat. And, um, and so he parked it at Monty's in the first slip, right, which is right behind the stage. So he would come down every night and sing with us and hang out and drink beer. And, and uh, so I ended up working for Neil, helping him fix up this old boat because uh, I had dislocated my shoulder, and I was in a body cast from here to here. It was like, it was like this, you know? And uh, so anyways, after, you know, this is after a couple of months of hanging out with Neil. He comes and he sees me, he goes, what the hell happened? I told him, you know, I threw a football, and my, I was a, a quarterback in high school, I threw a football, and my arm went out. So he goes, I'll tell you what, I want you to come and hang out on my boat, work for me, I'll take care of you. It's, it was great. So one night we're there, and we're uh, rolling some up, you know, we're on his boat, which was called the Evening Coconut. That was the name, that's what he named his boat, the Evening Coconut. And so, we're, you know, it's like me and him and, and this guy, Roger, that was helping him out in Miami while he was here. Yeah, oh yeah. It was a good damn dope, too. And so he was writing this song. He, he was actually in, uh, what he was doing in Miami, he was recording with Stephen Stills, the Stills Young Band. It was called Long May You Run. And he was finishing up this song. And he even asked me, uh, what would you think an, uh, a name for, these, for, the, for the mast of a boat? And I said, sailing trees. And he goes, oh, that's pretty good. You know, of course, I went, Neil Young liked my idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways, he wrote this song, and I was sitting there watching him writing it. It was very, it was cool. It's called Midnight on the Bay. It's midnight on the bay and lights are shining on the sailboats that sway. There's a cool ocean breeze blowing down through the keys. Think I'll call it a day. Oh, midnight on the bay, sure. See, there's someone coming, walking right up to me. She tells me I know your name, and if it's all the same, I'd like to spend some time. Oh, midnight on the bay shore. Midnight, 
midnight, midnight, midnight on the bed. are shining on the sailboats that sway. There's a cool ocean breeze blowing down through the keys. Think I'll call it a the keys connection in that song. Right, no. I was going to do that. That was a big finale. You just blew it. That's all right. Um, well, I grew up in, in Palo Alto, California. Um, my father flew for Pan American. I was actually born in Miami, and then I was a baby. They moved out to the Bay Area. And because uh, my father wanted to fly to Singapore and all those exotic places. And um, so I, was taking, I started playing guitar at nine years old. And I was taking from this guy. He was a real nice guy, but he was an old guy, you know. He had like a bow tie on and, you know, and short white shirt. And I can just, he was real nice. His name was Mr. Jones. And uh, I, it was, he taught, he had a, um, a little room up top of a, a place called Swain's Music on University Avenue in downtown Palo Alto, which is now an Apple store. And... Uh, so I was taken from this guy, and, and you know, all the greatest music in the world was coming out then, you know, surf guitar, all this cool rock music was, not rock rock, but, Late 70s. no, this was like 1963, you know, uh, 1961, I was, I was born in 53, so, um, and I wanted to learn, you know, walk, don't run. And, you know, Mr. Jones was teaching me moon glow, and I only have eyes for you. You know. Was that me and Mr. Jones? No, that's no. Different Mr. Jones, different color. You know. Anyways, anyways, a friend of mine named David Goldman said, "Well, I'm taking guitar lessons from this guy Jerry over at Dana Morgan Music, which was like two or three blocks away, around the corner from." Swain's music, and I went in there, and then, you know I hear I hear I don't know what it was, but as soon as I saw it, I knew it was because I saw it in a movie. This guy playing a banjo, you know I could hear it. I could when I walked in the store with my mom. I said, "Mom, this guy, let's go check this guy out." And so we did, and he was just you, he had this 
energy coming off him. It was, it was uh, Jerry Garcia. And he was, he was the master banjo player in the Bay Area. There's really not too many guys that were better at bluegrass banjo than him. And, uh, and he played guitar, too. And, and, uh, but he, was bo he basically concentrated on banjo, but he taught lessons, guitar and banjo lessons, at Dana Morgan Music. So I, I went and started taking lessons from him. And, and uh, I didn't really like, I mean, I learned stuff about playing guitar, but he got me so enthusiastic about music, you know, about, and him and my mother just hit it off. They were just, you know, I had to like, I had like, hey, what about me? Because they would start talking and, you know, anyways. It was, it was a good experience. And I met him several times after that, you know, going to some of their shows. And, and uh, he was always very nice, and always laughing. The guy always had a smile on his face. Always. I don't know what that could be from, but you know. And also at that time, Ken Kesey, they were living up in the foothills of Palo Alto and the pranksters. One time, me and my friends, we rode our bikes. We were going to go to uh, get ice cream on University Avenue. And when we, we came in there, it was like a Saturday morning. All of the parking meters were uh, day glow. And this, remember, this is like 1964. I mean, I don't even think Dago, anybody knew what Dago paint was. Uh, the black light thing was just starting. And we come down, it was just so bizarre. Every single parking, uh, parking meter was day glow. I wonder who did that. Okay. One time, there was a girl. <laughs> I lived on St. Francis Drive. Am I supposed to play guitar? Or? No. All right. So I lived on St. Francis Drive, and this, this, I was about 12 years old now, and there was a girl up the street, and she was like 14. And um, she had just moved on the block, and um, we, you know, you know, we kind of got to know each other. Just We went... And we were we were we went to the same junior high school, and um, and you know, I'd go over see her. She was a really nice person. So she had a birthday. She had no friends. So her dad, and I think they were her, her 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 mom and her dad were divorced. Her dad took us horseback riding up in the foothills in Palo Alto. And uh, so it was kind of a rainy day, and. Um, we, we went out there, and we each got a horse, and we were on a horseback, and her horse bucked, right? And she was ahead of me, and for some reason, her dad got mad at me, took his daughter, and left. I had no way to get home. He just left me there. So I'm, I'm sticking my thumb out on Foothill Road like this, and all of a sudden, this bus pulls up and it, it had all this psychedelic writing on it and everything and and uh this guy i'm sitting there i'm looking at this like a, it's a spaceship the guy opens the door doesn't say anything he goes you want to you need a ride i said yeah i get on and it was that bus further that that you know prankster bus it was just just really weird. He drove me all the way, to, practically home. He drove me down all the way down Oregon Avenue, just about a block from my house. And those were the days in the, the Bay Area. All right, now let's get back to the semi-present. Valor and I went to Cuba, and it was the, the greatest thing. It was just the most wonderful thing. The people were fantastic. We, uh, we flew into Holguin, which is on the, the south side of the island. Her, her great, great, great uncle was the general that uh, freed Cubans from the Sp Spanish. They have, from Spain, he, they have this huge statue of him. It was a very exciting trip. It was wonderful. And yeah, and anyways, um, we did this trip, had a wonderful time. I came back, I was sitting on the couch, watching TV, and then these core changes came and I put them in my phone, and then forgot about it for about a year and a half. And then I, I went through my phone, oh, this is interesting. 
And uh, my friend Jim Mason helped me write some lyrics to this. So it's called Havana Harbor. And I hope I don't blow it because I haven't played it in a while. Billy Davids is going to help me out a little bit. Havana Harbor, a blazing moonlight, holding each other close in the night. Crazy ideas coming to you, play. Watching your body moving that way. All rendezvous in the Cuban sun. Left no regret for what we have done. Yeah. Havana Harbor, a blazing moon. Holding each other close in the night. Crazy ideas coming to you, watching your body moving that way. In old Havana, there is no shame, no shame. Two reckless hearts can never be Open the love, we'll hold back the dawn. Hey. Havana Harbor, a blazing moonlight. Hold each other close in the night. Crazy ideas come to me. Watching your body move now. All rendezvous in the Cuban sun, in the Cuban sun. Left no regret for what we have done. Yeah. Havana Harbor, a blazing moonlight, holding each other close in the night. Crazy ideas come and you play, watching your body move. Great song there. All right. Buddy. Billy Davidson, thank you. What? <laughs> there was at one time a musician on the Molokan. No, that one is gone now. It's a free show. Okay. Okay. When we went to Cuba, uh, there's. Has anybody been to Cuba here? No? Anyways, there is a. Uh, Right, right in the, uh, the near uh, downtown Havana, there's this place called the Malecon. It's where they have this big seawall. You know, you've probably seen pictures of the waves crashing up on it, and it's, it's a really beautiful place. Anyways, we went down there one night. There's a bunch of people. That's where they go to drink beer on Fridays and stuff. So they were down there, and uh, she goes, uh, Valerie goes to this guy who's got a guitar. He's playing very good. She goes, well, my husband is a musician, and the guy just takes his guitar off and sticks it on my head, and on my on my shoulders, and uh, and he, and uh, goes, Valerie, what are you doing? She goes, play uh, play Imagine, because um, I don't know if you guys know it or not, but there's a beautiful statue of John Lennon, and it's called John Lennon Park because uh, Fidel Castro loved John Lennon, thought he was a revolutionary. Yeah, and there's a there's a park bench, and then there's a and the, there's a uh, statue of John Brown, uh, John Brown, of John Lennon, 
that you can sit in the crutch, crutch, uh, crutch, what is it? Crutch of his shoulder and like looks like you're talking to him. It's beautiful. It's really cool. And um, anyways, where was I? You were singing Imagine. I was singing Imagine, and these people were singing along with me. It was it was just absolutely wonderful, just just wonderful. And then they I so. And, you know, they didn't speak English. I didn't speak Spanish. And so uh, Valerie says in Spanish, so what do you guys want to hear? And they go, Hotel California. <laughs> and again, I played, you know. And they all sang along with me, knew all, all the words. And then we start hearing, the train, the train. And uh, I'm going, the train? What, what's the tra it turned out there was a, uh, a shuttle that came by that took them all up and down the road, you know, to different places. So uh, they didn't want to be rude, so they like were like backing away like <laughs> one at a time. So, so and I'm going, so Valor goes, let's go with them. I said, go where? <laughs> where are they going to go? Uh, I'm thinking they're going to kidnap us and hold us for ransom. You know, so, and anyways, we, we got on the tram that came and picked us up, and um, <laughs> I'm sitting there still playing. I'm still playing Old Tale California in the tram, and there's this woman in front of me. She's like twerking. Like, her butt's right in my face. They were having fun. And then we went to this other bar, and me and this guitar player who I was playing his guitar traded songs. He was wonderful, and he walked us home, you know, and we had, when we went to Cuba, we brought a, a bunch of stuff. We brought food, we brought clothes. Uh, I brought like 20 packs of strings and passed them out to the musicians that I met there. And it was really cool. It was a great experience. It was a great, great experience. Now this is a song I wrote uh, when I was at a band called Slick Hurley. My best friend is a guy named uh, Mark Aguilar and they know him as Slick. Um, band tattoo and then he was uh, taken away by David Crosby he came Crosby came to the coconut grove and saw him play and uh, and it was an opportunity for slick so he he took it he went on the road with David and then later on we formed a band called slick Hurley and we had all the musicians from the starship because uh, after David Crosby he went and played with Marty Ballin and Paul Kantner and uh, so we that was our band. <laughs> it was a great band. And I wrote this song. We did, a, we did an album, but it never was released. But this is one of the songs. If you're If your mind is troubled, girl, take another look. And give yourself time. Give yourself a break. Oh, yeah. Just don't cross that line. It's going to be all right. And take another look. Take another look, it's not black or white, gonna be all right. Take another look, na na na. Take another look. Yeah, just give yourself time. Mm, give yourself a break. Oh, yeah. 
Just don't cross that line. Gonna be all right. Take another look. Time to do that right now. I told you we we're going to do this. We're going to give. We're going to give the third degree right now. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much for being you, here, Cindy. Valerie. Thank you so much for being here. We love having you guys. Thank you, everybody who's out in the audience Thank right you. now. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Kev, who inspired you to make music? Uh, it's a very long list. You know, we, Billy and I and you and Valerie, we grew up in a, just a renaissance of music. It was coming at us in all directions, all styles. Uh, uh, the Beatles, the Stones, the Grateful Dead, the whole you know, San Francisco Bay Area thing. Uh, Joni Mitchell, Jocko Pastorius, oh, yeah. um, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Neil Young, um, just so much, you know, just just was filled with music all the time, right. you know, just it was. There's so many great songs. That's why um, I'm able to continue to make a living because there were so many great songs that people still want to hear to this day, and it, it's people like Billy and Steve that keep that spirit alive and, and play those songs so great that when I come down and play with them, I just, we just fit, you know, and, and it's, and that's yeah, my answer and I'm era. sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, how would you describe the music that you typically create? Um, sort of uh, folk and country rock. Um, uh, that's about it, you know. Um, I okay. like the blues too. I try to put some some blues in some of my songs, you know, to get that blues feeling. Mm -hmm. I could never be a real blues man, but I like to get that feeling that they emoted and, and taught me and listen to those and records. I should ask Valerie this too, because yeah. it looks it sounds like you two co-write a lot together. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that was my one trick pony. <laughs> no, w no, you've helped us, Jim and I, write some of this yeah. stuff we yeah. write. <laughs> Uh, if you could go on tour with somebody, who would it be? Oh, I don't know. Um, I, w I would love to have gone on tour with my friend Bobby Ingram. Yeah. I would have. He's um, brilliant. Yeah. Um, you know, it's Chris Stapleton. Just, just, just so I could learn from him, you know. And there's a guy named, um, there's a guy named uh, Marcus King. Oh, yeah. That I would love, you know, to he's learn from. And, and, and he's a youngster too. He's, he's young, but he, he's he's, oh, he's, he's an old soul. Yes, for sure. All right, last question. If heaven exists. When you reach the pearly gates, what would you like God to say? You don't have to pay me that buck 80 you, got, you borrowed from me. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? No. What? I would like God to say, <laughs> I would like God to say that uh, 
you, you stumbled, you got up, and you stumbled again, and you got up, and then you stayed up. Welcome home. Oh, that is beautiful. Thank you so much for being here, Kevin. Thanks, Vale. And I, and I would like to thank Billy and Cindy for having me and being able to play in front of all your friends. Thank you so much. I know I'm a blabbermouth, but he made me do it. Thanks, Billy. Love you, man. And thank you, Valerie, for putting up with me. Thank you. I was just you playing some more? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Do me for a loop here. Well, we're in the keys, so I'm going to play a smuggling song. I happen to know and knew personally Sorry, it's weather. All right, so again, we go back to Coconut Grove. There was a guy named Rocky Williams that lived in the Grove, and he's one of those smugglers that never got caught. They got very wealthy. And... Uh, he, he stayed away from the white stuff. He just smuggled weed. But because, and he was, he's also, uh, he was also secretly one of the, the backers of uh, Woodstock. But he was, you know, he, he knew a lot of people. He knew Crosby. He's a good friend of Bobby's. And he knew Stephen Stills. I'm sure Rocky was, uh, uh, this guy Rocky, he was, he was a really cool guy. I, uh, I worked for him one time, not, I worked helping him move from one house to the other. I didn't work for him that way. I never, no. But um, anyways, he was, he was one of the guys that, you know, did it right. Anyways, and I know that he knows stills because uh, he used to, Rocky used to race these big, those big uh, cigarette, cigarette boats, and Stills got real interested in that, and, and probably Ingram introduced him, you know, so. so this is a smuggling song. Seven dials. Well, I don't pay taxes cause I, I never style. Don't do business that don't make me smile. Well, I love my aeroplane cause she's got style. I'm a treetop flyer. Fly any cargo 
you can't pay it wrong. Well, the Bush League pilots just can't get the job done. Flight into the canyon, never see the sun. Well, there ain't no such thing as an easy run. I'm a treetop guy. Yeah, I'm a born survivor. The people that ask me, would you learn to fly that way? It was over in a Vietnam chasing envy. Government taught me, you know they taught me right. Stay down under the tree line, boy. You just might be all right. I'm a true top flight. Things I am, and there's things I'm not. Well, I'm a smuggler, and I could get shot. Well, I ain't gonna die, and I ain't gonna get caught. I'm flying full in my airplane. I'm just too out of my tree. I mean, it. I mean, there's some good music out today. It's always, you know, it's getting a little harder to find, but there are a lot of talented people out there. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, what? Chris Stapleton. Yeah, he's he's the real deal. What a great show. <laughs> now, uh, again, Valerie and I wrote another song. And, uh, do that and uh, I love it down here in the Keys as you all do and uh, you know there's this thing and I heard about it before I even went down to the Keys said, don't go down there you'll get the Keys disease and I said, what is that is that like a STD or something no and uh, <laughs> it was no man when you go down there time just slows down and it's just like, you know, you, you leave Miami and all that shit behind. And, and uh, it just, it's just, you know, you, get, you catch it, you don't want to leave. You get down there and it's just so cool down in the Keys that you don't want to leave. So I wrote a song. Well, I was sitting. Miami truck, I wasn't having any fun. Started thinking about Key Long, I'll make a little run. 
Maybe down to Snapper, stopping in at the crib. It looks like I'm gonna have to tell my boss a little fib. Nothing you can do when you fail this at ease. You got the keys to the keys. All right. Well, I was southbound on the stretch in my old beat up car. She don't look pretty, but she takes me pretty far. Everglades are looking like some African dream. Smell the river of grass, hear the alligator scream. Nothing you can do when you fail this at ease. You got the keys, does it? Got a key to All right. Well, I was fishing in the ocean, diving in the bay. I caught a ton of fish. I fried them up today. Took a little trip down to the Lorelei. Saw big dick at Woody's. I laughed until I cried. There's nothing you can do when you fail this at ease. You got the keys to the well, maybe it's the water, maybe it's the reefs, maybe it's the conks, baby, baby. Oh, it's the praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the keys to the All right. From your head to your knees, you never want to leave. You got the keys to the You know the sun going down like a big red ball. I can't believe I have to say goodbye to it all. One more fritter, one more beer. Time sure does funny things down here. Nothing you can do when you fail this at ease. You got the keys to this. Hey, hey, hey. gonna leave but you are the keys you got the keys to disease yeah you got the keys to disease from your head to your knees baby. that's right We're in the final half hour. And uh, before we go any farther, uh, please put your hands together for the great, my good friend, Kevin Hurley right here tonight. Isn't Thank he, you, Billy. Uh, I got to make a, some more announcements here for a second. Okie dokie. And what's behind door number three? Pretty much already know what this anyways, because we're, we're winding down to our last uh, artist. But uh, so tomorrow uh, we have uh, Derek Cintron. He's a uh, he's a, f a founding member of a band called Brothers of Others, and he's multi instrumentalist. He's a guitar player, drummer, producer, bass player, keyboard player, songwriter. He's fantastic. He's going to be here tomorrow. And then our final show will, will be next week on Monday with Erickson Holt, who is another amazing uh, singer-songwriter. He, he's a, he's a New Orleans-style boogie-woogie uh, blues piano player. This, this, the guy is like, I, I think he's like one of the top five piano players in the world. <laughs> so if you guys are around next week, you might want to come see the show next week. And uh, this is my shakedown portion of the show where I ask everybody that's out, uh, watching uh, on uh, YouTube and on Facebook that there's the a the interwebs <laughs> for uh, for all the people that enjoy what you've been watching through the, the through this season please send money to the Venmo and the Cash App and the dirt 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 you know it's all in the bottom there you can find that and for all the people that are out here in the audience 
please put some money in that in that tip jar right there. All that money goes to the next uh, the next wave that comes every week, and uh, so we appreciate that very much as well. And uh, we still have another half hour. We're not done here yet. We're just uh, uh, the last half hour is uh, my chance to get it to uh, get, get to play with this uh, this hoodlum over here. He's going to the Martin tree. <laughs> Where little Martins grow. <laughs> yes. Let's do uh, that one, Scott. Uh, that one. Let's go on there. Uh, the saw before I go. Start off with that one, maybe. You can do it. Or, no, no. Not this one. Not this one. But, uh, um, no, the chain? Der, yeah, do the chain. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> Kevin and I, uh, we got done with a gig one night, and uh, we went to uh, to another bar, and it was, what was it, what was it, it was, uh, I forget what the name of the place now, but in any case, the, uh, the, the band got canceled, <laughs> and we said, well, we'll go up and play, and, and we, we'll audition, <laughs> and uh, we went up and played, and they said, you're hired immediately, <laughs> and that was at Hog Heaven, Hog Heaven, Hog Heaven. But, but we couldn't do it for some reason, because we were already... We were already booked or something. Or I can't remember. Right. Why did why did no. we, why did we not start playing there all the time afterwards? I can't remember. Because uh, they loved us and said, "Oh yeah, we're gonna hire you." And, and <laughs> they loved us and they gave us a shit ton of money that night. I remember. We love you so much. We never want to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. See you later. Thanks a lot. And, uh, take that guitar with you. Thanks for saving our night. But see ya. <laughs> We were great. We were, as I remember, and I believe we did this song. And, uh, you know, the thing about me and Kevin is we were both cut from the same rug. You know, we, uh, we both grew up with the same love of the of the, all the songs you know every time he pull out a song and say oh yeah i know that one and do another one and i know that one too yeah and he'll do another one yeah i know that one too <laughs> and it just keeps going on and on because uh, we just you know we both grew up in uh you know in the same uh you know, different sons of different mothers or whatever <laughs> brothers by other mothers that's right or something <laughs> but anyways so today we were doing a couple songs, just kind of messing around, and we, we messed around with this one, and it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Let's do that one. She has seen me changing. As you get closer Changing, and we 
Always hated that ending. <laughs> Always hated that ending. It's like, oh, it leaves you, and I'm like, is he, are they done? Are they done? It's a, it's a fake ending. <laughs> what was the other one that I hated? The, uh, oh, yeah, that was the other. The, uh, the, the, uh, let's do that one. Yeah, let's do that one. Really? Yeah, why not? <laughs> another, another ending that I can't stand, but I love the song. I love the way he sings this. Strange ending, too. <laughs> All right, very good. Thanks for doing that for me. I appreciate that because I love the way you sing that. And God, what a great tune, man. The Doors.
what you do to me Don't get carried away If you can do better than me Then go Yeah, go But remember Good love is hard to find Good love is hard to find You got lucky, babe You got lucky You put your hand on my cheek And then you turn your eyes away If you don't feel complete If I don't take you all the way Then go Yeah, go But remember you do to me don't get carried away Tom Petty. Good call. We did that last night. It was pretty cool. Yeah, thanks for bringing that one up again. That was pretty cool. That's my job, Billy. <laughs> uh, trying to think of what we did last night. It was really good. Uh, there were so many good things we did last night. Uh, let's do uh, Long May You Run. I love that one. Uh, we, we lost a, a truly a keys critter. Uh, we, we have a lot of them down here. And, uh, but this particular one, his name was Gunky. <laughs> Gunky, the gunkster. And uh, Gunky was uh, one of our, uh, our keys uh, critters. He was an amazing human being. And uh, 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 he was a, uh, I don't know, I, I can't go do it too much or we'll start crying right now but uh, anyways uh we pa he passed recently and uh, we really miss him and uh he was a tremendous guy and so let's send this song out to gunky and uh you know the story about this song here long may you run this is a song by neil young and he uh, <laughs> it, it sounds like a song about someone passing but it really isn't it's a, a song about his 
his limo. It's 1959 Pontiac hearse. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, he described it as a love song to a 1959 Pontiac hearse. Yeah, that's right. It's the one he drew. F he drove from uh, from Montreal to uh, Los Angeles to find Stephen Stills and start Buffalo Springfield. Yeah, and they had, he used to use the hertz for uh, to put all the equipment in the in the back there, and then he sold it to the Beach Boys, and the rest is history. But uh, whenever I sing the song, I always think about some people that have passed in my life, and uh, Gunky was a big one. He was uh, he was one of our keys. Super Keys Critters in that. We, we're going to certainly miss him a lot. You know the name of that hearse? No. It was Mort. Mort? <laughs> Short for mortuary. Yeah. But <laughs> sounds like Neil to me. <laughs> Solo. Wow. <laughs> but it's all right. <laughs> Take One, it away. Two, three, So 
so you did. Nice solo. It's my job, Billy. <laughs> So uh, we're winding down here. Uh, we, have, we probably have one more song to do before we do the garden party thing here. Do you got something you want to play? What, what, did, we do a, did we do something earlier that we wanted to do? Uh, you want to do that? Sure. You do that. What, what key? No. Huh? Did I said D. D. Not V. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's, we have a little uh, a thing. Um, my, my buddy Mark Macri, he's a keyboard player who tries to play acoustic guitar. And uh, one day I said, uh, we're going to do the song, Mark, play the, play the acoustic. It's, it's easy. It's one, four, five. It's, it's uh, A, E, and B. And he goes, oh, I don't do B. <laughs> do B? I don't do B. It's like, Mark, it's like, oh, I don't do B. I need, I need a capo to do that. It's against my religion. <laughs> I don't I, uh, do, do be. I uh, used to do this. I learned this from, again, my old friend Bobby Ingram. I mean, he would do this song, it, your, your Heart Would Break. And uh, um, again, he was one of the best singers I ever sang with. He, he avoided fame because he saw what it did to some of his friends. And he, he, was a, he just wanted to be pure. He just wanted to, to sing and not have to be owing to anybody. And he did that his whole life, and, and that's what I love about him. And he used to do this song, and every time I th do this song, I think about him. We were born before the wind. So much young than the sun. Yeah, the money boat was one here as we sail into the mist. Hot now, hear the sailor cry. Smell the sea, feel the sky. Let your soul and spirit fly as we sail into the mystic. And when we hear the fog and whistle blow, I will be coming home. And when we hear the fog and whistle blow, Gypsy soul, oh, just yeah. like back, in just the days like way old. back in the days of old. Magnificently we will flow as we oh. sail to the mist. Some blow, baby. You know I wanna have it. I don't wanna fear it. I wanna rock your gypsy soul. Oh yeah, just like way back, way back in the days of old. 
Magnificently we will flow as we sail into the mystery. Magnificently, 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 we will flow we as we flow. sail into the mystic, to the mystic, into oh, the mystic. It's too late, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late. Into too the mystic, I don't want to stop the mystic. now. Oh, it's too late to look it's too back. Late, it's too 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 late. It's too late, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late. I don't want to stop. Billy Davidson. It's too late, 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 it's too late. We just made that up we just made that up let's do it one more time it's too late 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 damn oh look it's too late <laughs> all right so uh we are we're at the end of the show here we're gonna do the uh, the uh, the garden party theme song once again folks please give it up for our, our Special guest here tonight, Kevin Hurley here. And Billy Davidson. Oh, I'll stop. And tomorrow uh, we have uh, Derek Cintron from uh, the Brothers of Others. He's another fantastic uh, singer-songwriter that will, uh, will be here uh, on the stage. And then we have one last, uh, uh, one last show for uh, next week, and that will be with uh, Erickson Holt. That's been a long... Long sh thing we did, Cindy D. Pretty amazing. Get up here. Get Cindy up here. Davidson, you're get a badass. Here. Come on, get up here and say hello. I know. All right, well. <laughs> I love you, Kev. Love you, Bill. Well, I went to a garden party to reminisce with my old friends. A chance to share old memories and play our songs again. And when I got to the garden party, they all knew my name. No one recognized me I didn't look the same But it's all right now I learned my lesson well You see, you can't please everyone And so you got to please yourself You know, people came from miles around Everyone was there And Yoko brought her walrus there was magic in the air And over in the corner Much to my surprise a Mr. Hughes wearing Dylan's shoes And wearing his disguise But it's all right now Learn my lesson well You see, you can't please everyone And so you got to please yourself and all the people saying I play them all the old songs I thought that's why they came but no one heard the music we didn't love the same I said, hello, Mary Lou, she'd be 
belongs to me When I sang a song about honky tonk it was, it was time to leave But it's all right now Learned my lesson well See, you can't please everyone And so you, you got to please yourself And all those people sang da 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 Take a solo here. Someone open the closet door Out stepped Johnny Be Good He was playing his guitar Like a ringing a bell And looking like it should So if you gotta play these garden parties Oh yeah I wish you a lot of luck Good luck Cause if memories were all I sang I'd rather drive a truck And it's all right now Learn my lesson well You see, you can't please everyone And so you, you got to please yourself And it's all right now I Learn my lesson well You see, you can't please everyone And so you, you got to please yourself Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, participating in our show tonight. Once again, we'll be back again tomorrow. Try to get here at 6 o'clock. And uh, the show starts at 6.30 with uh, Derek Cintron. <laughs> Kevin Hurley, I love you, Deb. I love you to death. Thank you so much for being too, here Billy. for our show. And thank you to yeah. Cindy and, and Billy for having yeah. me. Thank you. And thank you to Valerie for being here, too. And Harley. Uh, and Harley. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>